365 days of horsemanship, day 225. So today's um, uh, been a pretty nice day. It's been quite a short session. Um, it's Christmas Eve Eve and I'm off um, to see my mum in Basingstoke for the next two days. So I'm not going to see the horses now until Boxing Day. Um, and yeah, it's really like, I mean, it's late. Like I've done a bazillion things. I have like Christmas presents to deliver before I go away. And I've worked all day on a 12 hour shift. And I just really wanted to come and see the horses at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, it was nice. It was really nice. I came to Mia, um, and yeah, one of the other horses came up and had some nose strokes with me, and that was really lovely. Um, and then today with Mia, I was able to, she's a lot more interactive. Like, I definitely felt today like there was this real warmth. Like, I spent a lot of the session at touching distance. It was really only like five or ten minutes. I was at touching distance, and I really felt like it was okay for me to be there. And it was really interesting because I think other times she's tolerated, but the difference today was quite remarkable. And it's interesting because I think I need to trust myself to look for that feeling again. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really nice actually. And there were quite a few times where I basically just tried to stay in flow with her. I tried to stay in flow with her feet um, and actually we were able to do that, you know, for probably close to a minute at a time, just kind of like, looking at stuff together, doing stuff together, just being in sync. Like then she'd look up at a member of the herd and even a couple of times when she moved quite quickly because they were kind of moving around, the tension came up a little bit. I was still able to keep my feet pretty much in time with her. And actually I think she appreciated that. Like I definitely think there is a time for um, leaving as soon as it becomes like challenging in terms of like keeping the feet the same. And then I think there's other times where it's important to like make the effort to try to stay with the horse. And I think it's about knowing when the horse wants you to stay with them and when the horse wants you to leave. And it's like, I think when someone else in the herd has pushed on her, I think that was a moment today, whether that's repeatable or not, I don't know, but that was a moment today where actually she appreciated my company and me staying with her. And I think that maybe made her feel safer or she just appreciated it, it was nice. Whereas actually when we're, when she's comfortable, and I'm somewhere for too long, and then she moves unpredictably, actually then I need to leave and find a different place. So it was good. I definitely felt, I definitely felt it like we were just in sync a lot more. Um, yeah, there was a lot of focus changes from her um, to the herd, to the environment, a couple of times to me as the leader. Um, and yeah, so that was nice. It felt like a balanced session. It was like quality over quantity um, was kind of definitely the vibe for the day generally with both horses. Um, and yeah, so that was really nice. I went to Lawrence um, afterwards and yeah, and he like had kind of come down towards like seeing me and we had like some sort of nose nose strokes and then everyone came down the hill and it was interesting as they were coming down the hill actually because I, so I knew they were going to start walking. Initially, I'd sort of made the offer to walk back upwards, but then some of the other horses started walking downwards. So I started walking downwards too. And I think in classic old me fashion, I decided to set a good example by walking down the hill straight. And I look across and all the other horses are following each other in a line, walking at this like steep diagonal so that the hill is as like mild as possible. And I looked at them and I thought, you know, it's interesting because I think I, I think I know better, right? But I'm just proving that I don't understand them with my weird human ways. And actually, I think it's about this idea of like stepping back within myself, like, when I reflect across my life, even when I was a young child, like, you know, I had my brother, but he was pretty, from what I remember, he was relatively submissive is like the wrong word. But he was pretty compliant. Like I made the suggestions, I had the ideas, and he pretty much just went along with whatever I said for pretty much all the memories I have of him. And we never really argued because he never really disagreed with anything that I wanted to do that I can remember. And I'm sure there were times where he decided what we were going to do, but largely I think it was me. And then after he died, then it was just me listening to myself. And I didn't really make that many 
friends for quite a long time afterwards. And I didn't have any friends that like I was close with around that time that I spoke to regularly to maintain any relationships like that. So my life became, became quite insular. And I think when I reflect back, that I've always kind of been a leader of myself in that way. And actually, I don't know that I've always allowed the opportunity to really listen and try what other people want to do. If I think my idea is better, I'll just do my idea. And I'm not bothered if I'm doing it alone or with others. And I think that's definitely translated into my work with the horses. And I noticed it today as I'm walking down this hill. And I look across and I see Lawrence walking and I think, you know, it would have been better if I would have followed his lead whilst trying to have the timing to look like I was like thinking the same thing, you know, be fast enough to feel like I was, you know, thinking the same thing. And 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 I realized that actually, if I do that, I'm still building this rapport where he's like, wow, she really gets it. She really gets it. She really gets it. She really gets it. And then me suggesting an idea is going to need less persuasion because historically I've proved that I get it by doing all these things that he wants to do because it doesn't really make a difference I think it's better this way but actually it's not really like he can make that choice you know and I think that was a that was a that was a good fundamental thing to learn I definitely there's a question that has definitely been brought up out of it which I think is really interesting like Elsa talks about, and I've heard other people talk about it as well. Like I remember I asked Pat Pirelli this um, when I saw his um, his 40th anniversary clinic last year. And, and I asked him, you know, it seems like, it seems like you're, you're, you're very, you're very quick. Like you're always in the right place at the right time. Is it because you're just very quick at reacting or do you already know what's going to happen before it happens? And he says, yeah, I already know what's going to happen before it's happened. And Elsa says something along similar lines where she talks about being able to predict what your horse is going to do before they do it. So you can already start doing it and they're like, wow. And so I think my question is, is that real or is it a case of watching and reacting sort of like so quickly that it looks like you've predicted, but you like you haven't actually done it until the the movement or the motion or the action has started. And I think I know the answer. I think the answer is literally that you predict. But it's amazing to me to imagine a time when I would be able to truly do that because so often it's like I, I think that something might happen or I can see what happens before what happens happens. And I can maybe think, I think this is going to happen next, but I still, I'm not going to do it until it happens. So I'm like in sync, but I, I haven't really started before. And so I think I just need to like, or I want to know really like the minutia of how that, that works. And if I'm like on, on the right track, in the right place, if I, if my goal is actually further than that, that I really, I'm going to be looking at that horse and going, well, I think the next thing that's going to happen is this or this or this. And I'm already prepared in, in my mind for those outcomes. And I think I, I think I, I think I suspect that that's the outcome that, that I'm, that I should be working towards. But I think I need to have the reassurance to know that's where I'm heading in order to set the destination, because I definitely find that quite difficult. Like setting long-term goals, I think is challenging for me. Certainly setting long-term goals that are achievable and aren't just like, you know, castles in the sky, because I think I get, I I get unconfident and I don't usually trust, I don't always trust the process or I'm not sure that what I'm doing right now is going to lead to the outcome that I want it to lead to. Like, and then I don't commit to it because I'm afraid it's not going to work out and I'll waste my time. And so I end up constantly wasting my own time and fulfilling my own prophecies by never committing to anything and for long enough to actually get the end result and then going, see, I did it and it didn't work. Anyway, um so yeah so that's a really interesting question I think I'm going to try to ask Elsa about it um and see what she says um but yeah it's it was a really good day I'm looking forward to Christmas I'm sad I'm not going to see my horses on Christmas but I'm really looking forward to spending time with my mum and um yeah and I'm sure they're going to have a lovely time here so yeah Merry Christmas everyone